Shetland is steeped in history. With over 8,000 archaeological sites recorded, you can't go far without coming across a site. I'm Helen Smith and I met up with Val Turner, archaeologist with Shetland Amenity Trust, to get a rough guide to archaeology in the Isles. Well, the jewels in Shetland's crown are Jarlshof, Musa and Old Skatnes, and they're on the UK tentative list for World Heritage status because they are just so internationally important. Jarlshof you can go and visit any time and it has display boards that help to guide you. Musa is a bit different. I mean, that's our broch that stands 13 metres high and is really very impressive. It's the most complete broch in existence. But to get there, you have to go on a boat and it's on an island and so you can only go when the boat's running. Old Skatnes is different again. There's a broch in the centre, but there's a whole Iron Age village around it, which really makes it unusual. And the village itself is really well preserved. And then there's also reconstructions, so you get a feel of what it might have been like to be inside some of the buildings uh, when they were fully functioning, Iron Age houses. And that is going to be open from the middle of May through to the beginning of September every Friday. Those three sites are all based in the South Mainland, but there are other archaeological sites throughout Shetland, aren't there? Of course, yes, there are. The South Mainland was important because it was where people originally uh, came to when they came into Shetland. They would have come up from Scotland mainland and you could see land all the way. But people have lived throughout Shetland of course and different parts of Shetland seem to be very interesting for different types of site. For example, if you're looking to see Viking longhouses then you need to head up to Unst, the most northerly island in Shetland. And what about on the west side? What's available for people to go and see there? Heading out to the west side you see the most amazing prehistoric landscapes and all the not only remains of the houses but also all the field boundaries are still there and there are lots of chambered cairns and so you can walk for miles on the west side and literally trip over archaeology which isn't necessarily displayed but once you get your eye in it's quite easy to see it so if you start off somewhere like the Skor de Brewster or Staney Dale Temple which of course isn't really a temple but we don't really know what it is It's it's a giant prehistoric house But if you start off at some of those sites, which have been excavated, and you can see what the remains look like, and then go off into the hills and discover more for yourself. Now today then we've come out to the Clickamin Brock. Can you tell me a little bit about it and its history? Clickamin sadly has had a bit of a chequered history. We never quite understood it and now because our archivist has done quite a lot of work on it we're beginning to understand why we don't understand it and the reason for that is because in the Victorian period really there were several phases of people trying to consolidate it and reconstruct it and put it back together and clear it out and it was after all that had happened that somebody came along and excavated it. So some of what was being excavated was only built tens of years before. So that's really complicated the story of Clickamin. That's really, really interesting. And can you tell me how many brocks are there in Shetland? Do you have any idea? Well, there are physical remains of about 80. If you count in place names, where there's a broch element in the place name and there probably was a broch there one time and possibly coastal erosion has taken it away or perhaps it's been built over or the stones have been reused in other buildings and if you count all those then you're probably going up to about 120. And did they communicate with each other? What was their purpose? Well we think they must have communicated each other. It's very interesting that you can see from one to another in all sorts of chains and not necessarily as you'd expect one two three you might be able to see from one to three and then from three back to two and then across to four and so it's um there were complex chains and some of the kind of indivisibility is just kind of almost sneaky holes in the hills sneaky gaps in the hills which you wouldn't necessarily expect if you look on a map you would think oh we can't see from there to there but just because of the geography when you get there you find that you can so that must have been intentional they also 
were clearly the focus for a community, the focus of important places as well. Fantastic. Now, you've spoken about the jewels in the crown, but do you have a personal favourite that you like to go to and visit? I like Pinhuland on the west side, other than Skatnes, of course. Skatnes is, is very close to my heart. But Pinhuland on the west side is a whole series of prehistoric houses. There are at least eight there. There are some chambered cairns. The field systems are just obviously...